I have not had my period for three years. I feel really cute. So earlier I filmed a little makeup video. Um, since then, I've kept the eyes but I changed the lips. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to my channel. Um, so I want to do some story times, I want to do some artsy stuff. Um, I'm no beauty guru. I live my life in sweatpants and oversized t-shirts. So I want to I wanna not just do beauty stuff. As you can remember the title, I'm talking about my endometriosis. Later in this video, I'm going to show you my scars, or two of them, because the third one, I don't want to get demonetized. <laughs> endometriosis is a common inflammatory condition where tissue similar to the lining of the uterus is found outside the uterus. The tissue can form lesions, nodules, and cysts, which are mostly formed in the pelvis, the pouch of the Douglas, ovaries, bowel, ligaments, and bladder. Chances are you've probably heard of this before. A lot of the time people assume that it's just really bad periods. And in some cases it can be. Uh, for everyone, it's different. Now, before I go into my personal story, I'm going to give you some more information, such as the symptoms or common symptoms. This isn't the entire list. There's there actually quite a lot uh, common to uh, uncommon or very rare symptoms. I'm just going to read you uh, a basic um, symptom list of the common symptoms. Pain before or during menstruation. Um, this isn't necessarily just for menstruation sometimes especially with me the pain can be throughout the entire month it doesn't have to just be when you're menstruating or ovulating it can be essentially any time but more often than not one of the main symptoms is incredible pain when you're on your period painful sexual intercourse for me personally i did experience this um Sexual intercourse has never really been something I've enjoyed because I associate it with large amounts of pain. And of course, with these symptoms, it doesn't apply to everybody who has endometriosis. Cramping or pain during bowel movements or urination. I don't remember. <laughs> Infertility. Again, does not apply to everybody. Um, more often than not, people who have endometriosis are told that they're chances of having children are very low heavy periods yes um not always again the symptoms are kind of like a baseline for diagnosing endometriosis but honestly all these symptoms can come down to a normal period as well i got my first period when i was 15. i was a little late bloomer um nothing wrong with that so before I got my period, I would experience cramping, pain, um, bloating, you know, all the regular period symptoms, but before I even actually got a period. So I got my first period at 15, and every single month when I got my period, my period would last like between seven and nine days, and it was very heavy. I would wake up covered in my own blood, I'd have to change my sheets every day, um, no matter what I used to help with my menstruation, whether it was a pad, a tampon, um, later in life I started using menstrual cups, it didn't matter. Um, my periods were so heavy that I'd wake up covered in blood. I know that's graphic, it's disgusting, but that's just what it is, and you, you sort of get used to it, <laughs> and it's not as gross as, as it probably sounds. Um, you know, you just clean yourself up, have a shower, change your bedding, it's no big deal. It's no big deal. Um, but my periods would last for a long time and they'd be very heavy. And I would be in a lot of pain to the point where I would I would be bullying my eyes out of my bed. I'd be rolling over. I'd be doing, like, I having my knees up to my chest um, in fetal position helped a lot with cramping. But there was really nothing I could do about it. And there were, there were times where I, I would have to take the week off school because I was in so much pain where I couldn't concentrate, I couldn't sleep, I couldn't do anything but lay in my bed and cry. That every, every period I would just take the week off school. 
I mean, it wasn't every single time, but there were times where I'd freak out my friends because out of nowhere, I'd just be walking to my class, and the next thing I know, I'm crouched on the ground screaming in pain. I'm not exaggerating. I would literally be screaming. Um, I can imagine how traumatic that would be for the people around me, let alone myself. And then I knew something was wrong. I knew something was wrong. This isn't normal to be in this much pain every single time I menstruate. However, my mom had the same problem as me. Every single period, she'd be screaming on the toilet. It, it actually terrified me. I was coming up to getting my first period, and I was so scared because of what I see my mom go through, and then it ended up happening to me, which... <laughs> my luck, am I right? I first got checked for endometriosis when I was 17. I went to my doctor. I keep complaining about it. They put me on this really expensive medication, it cost me like $70 for a bottle of this really powerful medication to help with cramps and everything. It, it did nothing. <laughs> it did nothing. I think I got that prescribed from the hospital as well. It didn't do anything for me. I've been on so many different medications, painkillers, none of it really helped. The process of figuring out if I actually did have endometriosis took two years. And the way they figured it out was by surgery. They gave me an ultrasound. I've had a few ultrasounds for it, and they couldn't really see anything. Um, and so, after two years of being on a waiting list, of preparation, of trying to figure out what's wrong with me, I finally got surgery. <laughs> I got a laparoscopy. Um, I was terrified. I, I had never had surgery before, I didn't really know what I was expecting, Google made it sound way worse than it was. Um, <laughs> I was freaking out. Uh, uh, I think that if I were to have it again, I would be fine. I know what to expect, it wasn't that bad, recovery was fine, everything. So a laparoscopic surgery is essentially keyhole. Um, there's two different kinds, there's one where they like cut you right down the abdomen, and then there's a hands-on laparoscopic surgery where it's keyhole so it's it's three or more small incisions into your abdomen um five to ten millimeters so that they're tiny tiny little incisions and they start in your belly button like right at the bottom of your belly button they'll put a small incision to put a camera in to see uh first to see what's going on in there and see if you actually need the surgery um or for them to continue if it's safe, if it's not, if you need it, if they need to do a full abdomen laparoscopic surgery, or if it, they just need keyhole. So before I went in for my surgery, I wasn't allowed to eat or drink anything 12 hours prior, essentially nothing after midnight. So my dad came with me, he took me, and I was, I was really terrified. Never had surgery before, I was terrified, I didn't know what to expect, it sounded scary. I was like, oh my god, what if I don't wake up? What if I die on the table? What if the anesthesia doesn't work? What if I'm awake during the whole thing? What if I wake up during? Like, my brain was just going crazy. As it, I'm pretty sure that's normal before surgery is to, to go a little crazy. Uh, <laughs> not knowing what to expect. But, um... They explained it to me, it seemed pretty simple, asked me a lot of questions, I think I got some blood tests done. Uh, they put me in this, this gown, and that was really uncomfortable, like, wasn't wearing anything underneath it. They gave me cute hospital socks, they're bright red socks with like little sticky things on the bottom and the top, and it's like, it doesn't have a heel so you can put them on either way. Um, and they gave me these white tights to put on they were like really really tight and that's to prevent blood clots um i actually still have them i think i still have them i also still have my hospital socks like i just really love them they were they were cute <laughs> it was an experience i wanted to remember it with something so they gave you these tights um and they gave you hospital socks and i was on the waiting room for a little bit and then i got moved into onto a stretcher, a bed, and they put, what is it called? It's called an intravenous tube, which is an IV, into your arm. So they can give you fluids, they can give you anesthesia, all the things. 
And so I had an anesthesiologist come in, explain everything to me, um, ask me a few questions, uh, allergies, all the things, and then about 10 minutes later, after he, he gave me something, I can't remember what it was, it was like to relax me and all that, um, and then I was taken into a separate room, uh, where it's, it's like, where the surgery room is, um, operating room, there is a side room that I was put into, uh, to clean me up, make sure I'm prepped for surgery, and put the anesthesia into me. She told me to count back from 10, and I don't remember anything past 10, so... <laughs> Uh, I went into surgery, there were no complications, no problems, and went smoothly. They, I have three little incisions, and they removed, I want to say like a, an old 50 cent piece coin amount of endometriosis out of the outside of my uterus. It wasn't my ovary. One of them. <laughs> um, I came off the anesthesia and I remember I kept saying I'm sorry to dad because I kept going back to sleep because it just made me sleepy. Like some people wake up from, from surgery and they're all loopy and everything's great and everything. I wasn't like that. I just wanted to go to sleep. Um, I think I was loopy still, but I just kept waking up and going back to sleep. Um, I was, I was bleeding down there quite a bit, which is normal. And you're, you typically bleed down there for like a week after surgery. Um, totally normal. Everything hurt. I was cramping. I, I had stitches in my stomach. I, I was, I was bleeding. It, it, recovery was actually really easy. It was just, it was kind of like having a period. Just extra holes. I believe that my stitches were, were dissolving ones because it was on the inside as well. So I don't remember actually having to get stitches removed. So I think they were just dissolvable ones. People were looking after me, <laughs> cooking me food, bringing me anything I needed. It was really great. <laughs> um, I had some really, really nice people around me at the time to, to help with that. And I pretty much just lived in a really, really big t-shirt. Because I couldn't really wear underwear because of where the stitches were. So I just wore a t-shirt with a, a flannel, like um, a face washing towel, the little square one. I would just fold that up into three and then stick that between my legs as if it was a pad. And that worked wonders. Um, so yeah, that was my surgery. It was great. It was fine. It, I would definitely do it again if I had to. Before my surgery... I was put on several different kinds of contraception to help control it and help with the bleeding and periods. I've been on the Depo, Depo Provera, which is an injection into your butt. It caused me to bleed for three months. It wasn't like heavy bleeding, it was mostly just spotting, but it was very... It's, <laughs> it's not ideal. The thing is with contraception, it doesn't work for everybody. It's trial and error to find what works for you. So I'd been on that, I've been on, I couldn't be on any of the mini pills, the pill or anything, because of uh, blood clots in family history, so that's one that I have not tried. I have been on the Marina, which is an IUD, and that caused extreme pain and large amounts of bleeding as well, and I had to get that removed quite early on. So after my surgery, they put me back on Depo-Provera as a preventative to stop endo coming back. However, it caused endometriosis to come back. I bled for another three months, so I went off depot and I just, I dealt with the periods. I dealt with the periods. Um, there was really nothing I could do. It came back full force and that's just that. And I needed to get put back on a waiting list, but I talked to my doctor and it never ended up happening. She forgot. Uh, I'm with a different doctor now, and if these problems ever come back, I will be talking to my new doctor and requesting another surgery. Because it's... I know I'm going to end up having to live with this for the rest of my life. 
I may as well make it not as bad as it could be, you know? I got the surgery, I want to say April? April or May. It was around my birthday, it was April or May of 2016. Come sometime in February of 2017, I ended up in hospital because I'd had a 52 day period that was very heavy, caused by endometriosis. I was heavily bleeding for 52 days and I was suffering from blood loss and severe anemia. So I ended up in hospital and they put me on this 10 day pill thing. I think it was like two doses a day for 10 days of this pill to help stop the bleeding. However, it didn't, I mean, it helped. It stopped the heaviness of the bleeding, but it didn't actually stop the bleeding. And so I ended up getting the Jadel, the Jadel rod implant, which I have today. <laughs> I have not had my period for three years, thanks to this contraception. It was the best thing I've ever done for myself. As you can see, this little scar right here, and the rods just come up here. I got that put in, and I have not had a period since. Um, they last for four to five years, and so this time next year, I'm probably going to get it removed and then replaced, which I'm very worried for. I don't want to last the entire five years, um, although I'm not using it for contraception. I'm using it for period control. And so if it does last me the five years, that's absolutely amazing, because I've heard a lot of people who it's worked for, when they get it removed and replaced, they get their periods back. And I I am in no rush to get my period back. I realize that that can mean that I risk being infertile, but I already risk being infertile to the point where I've already accepted I'm probably never having kids, and that's absolutely okay. I've had a long time to come to terms with this. I mean, if I ever do have kids, cool. If I don't, I'm not bothered. I've come to terms with it. I'm going to show you my scars. They're faded a lot. It doesn't leave a very big scar. It's, um, it's for a few years it was noticeable, but I haven't noticed it in like the last two years, I think. Well, I hope this video was informative and I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you can take something away from this. And it was it's quite nice to share my experience. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you like story times from me, give it a thumbs up. Educational videos, all the things. I don't know. Um, I don't think I'm very good at story times, but this was a lot of fun and I hope you enjoyed it. And if you want me to do more content like this, let me know. Have a good day, night, whatever it is wherever you are, and I really hope that you take something away from this. And if you do have endometriosis, I feel for you, and I really hope it can be resolved. And just know that the surgery isn't nearly as scary as it sounds, and there are things out there, there are contraceptions out there that can help you. Just find the right one for you. It's about trial and error, and it may take a long time, but you will get there, and it's going to be okay. Thank you for watching.